Welcome to our farm safety video series. It's going to talk about the rules of the road as it relates to farm equipment and other pedestrians on, on the public roads. I'm going to give you some examples of what has happened to me in my life as it relates to farm accidents on public roads as well. Let's talk about what some of the rules are of residing in, uh, in North Dakota or to use public roads in general. When I was about 16 years old, one of the things my dad always did is that we were expected to have a part in the farm operation. And we were driving tractors at a very young age and we were moving uh, farm equipment and hay bales up and down public roads. And one of the things my dad always taught me is that, you know, you know what you're going to be seeing in front of you when you're operating your farm equipment, but you're operating equipment that's probably too wide to where you can't see what's happening behind you. The first thing that he did is that we were hauling hay and, and I had uh, a wide load of hay on the back of my tractor. My dad told me to pull off into the lane um, of the, the other lane so nobody could pass me. And in this particular case, I was gonna, I was all the way into the left lane because I could see there was no traffic coming from the other end. And I was about ready to turn off onto my approach and I realized that somebody had decided to pass me and actually had uh, stuck the side of their car into, the, into my stack mover because they had an, either a choice either to dump their vehicle down into the ditch or to try to push me over. This is one thing I want to be very clear is that we are not able to take our equipment into the, the lane that is not designated for uh, the direction that we're traveling. The proper way to make a, a turn when using farm equipment to uh, make a uh, go on to another approach is to pull off into your lane and then bring your tractor back without crossing the center line until you your mirrors or you have visibility to see if there is a car or somebody behind you. Your lane needs to be followed um, throughout any of your driving experiences. This kind of goes into play with some other things about rules of the road as well, is that you can't have, um, uh, another accident that happened to me was uh, I was driving down a, a, a road with my tractor, unaware of what was happening behind uh, the baler, and all of a sudden the car had hit me, and it kind of jolted me and it sent me flying into the ditch. And uh, this kind of brings up the point too, is that we do live in an agricultural state, but we also realize that we are not the only ones on public roads. The people that are operating cars and pickups and trucks and motorcycles, whatever it might be, have to follow the same set of guidelines and understand that farm equipment is part of living on public roads. We're gonna be driving at probably somewhere of 25 miles an hour or less. And so the, the time that it takes for a car to come up and actually hit um, farm equipment, it does not take very, very long at all. So one of the things we would like people to, to follow is the five second rule. Normally, if you're following one car to the next car, they say there's a three second rule. So you find a spot on the road and then you, t you determine how long it takes for you to get to that point. But with farm equipment, because they're moving so much slower, we want there to be five seconds from the time that you can find that point um, of where the, the back of that farm equipment is at until your vehicle actually gets there. Um, there are signals on the most farm equipment, the hazard lights, that will be on uh, the tractors. They're gonna have lights here. The slow moving vehicle sign is gonna be on the back of the last piece of equipment of, of any uh, farm machinery, uh, anhydrous tanks, balers, whatever it might be that's traveling down the road. Now, you don't have to have fl uh, flashers on your tractor. Um, if they are equipped with flashers, um, it's advisable to have them on, but we do need to have the slow moving vehicle sign on that last piece of equipment. That is an indication that farm equipment is traveling at less than 25 miles per hour. Another thing to keep in mind is that as we go down the, the roads, um, we're going to be dealing with some farm equipment that might be larger than what the eight foot six inch uh, width of our roads are. So we get into these, these uh, farm equipment like uh, combines, um, we are, everybody's probably seen them on a road and you, some of them even drive with their headers on um, and so they're taking up well more than what that eight foot six inch width is 
In this particular case, again, the same rules apply, is that you need to stay within your lane, and then if you are gonna run with larger equipment, there are times that there might be an obstruction in the road, such as a sign, and then farmers are going to be needing to come around um, those signs, and they're gonna be taking up both lanes of the highway. In North Dakota, and many other states as well, is that as soon as you decide to cross the center line, rules are gonna change from the standpoint that um, you are going to assume responsibility of what's going to happen in this lane. Now, if a farmer is going, to, or if a, an automobile driver is going to decide to pass, and um, they come up and they hit the, the front of uh, that farm equipment, they're responsible for that. But if the farmer is all the way into this lane, they have to understand what's happening with the other automobile drivers. Now, this becomes a whole different issue of really who caused the accident. And so you need to be aware of that. Some other things that do um, happen is uh, we, we realize that we've got mirrors, uh, that we can see a lot of what's happening in front or behind us with this far, farm equipment. Um, and we need to uh, educate our people on how to use that. Another thing we wanted to keep in mind during this farm safety series is that if you are going to hire youth, and we're talking uh, kids under the age of 16 years of age, they do need to have a farm safety certificate to be able to operate farm equipment for hire. Some other things to keep in mind is that even if you're hiring foreign labor or somebody who's unfamiliar with your equipment, it's always in the best interest of the farmer to educate that producer or that operator on the safety factors that go along with, with that farm equipment. Um, get them familiar with uh, what the um, the colors are that are going to be in farm equipment. Yellow is going to indicate that it's a PTO. The orange is going to indicate accelerators like your, your hand throttles or your foot throttles. Um, red is always stopping, um, those types of things. But get them familiar with their pieces of farm equipment. Anytime that you're going to hire um, foreign labor, again, just go through the worker protection standards and educate them on, on how to safely operate all farm equipment. There's a lot of moving parts on these these machines. They're big. They're probably going to, you know, uh, combines or, or tractors. You could easily be running into a quarter to a half million dollar piece of machinery. And the, the people that uh, own that equipment would love you to take good care of that. So as you get out on public roads, make sure that you prop, or practice proper safety uh, maneuvers. And, um, and then we really encourage you to to understand the rules of the road, uh, both as an automobile driver and as farm operators as well. We encourage you to have a, a, uh, a successful, successful season um, as we get into planting and harvesting season and uh, take care of yourself. We need every farmer we can get.